In this lecture, we will look at what are routers, bridge, switch, repeaters and hub. They are the things that are asked so many times in your interviews. So let's try to look at what routers, what a bridge and switch and what are repeaters and hub. So for just looking at it, so routers, routers are at the network layer. Okay, so they are connecting device at the network layer. Bridge and switch are connecting devices at the data link layer and repeaters and hub are interconnecting devices at physical layer physical layer okay so now let's try to see in detail so let's look at first what is repeater so repeaters were the first thing that were invented okay for making the LAN remove the distance limitation okay so what does that mean so initially let's say you have a university campus so in building a you have some computers okay and then in building b you have some computers okay but i want that those are on the same local area network but the problem is if this distance is big and the signals which are coming here over the wire they will start attenuating okay so they will become weaker as they travel over the long distance due to attenuation so that happens with electrical signal so this imposing a limit on the length of the land that okay how far what can be your maximum length of your wire because of degradation of the signal as the distance increases so what was the solution it was that repeaters now join two lands so here this distance is very far so what i do i connect it with a repeater and what will a repeater do so it will have my signals are again repeated with refreshed okay so let's try to see that thing so we will look at so for example what happens here is so if you have a repeater okay and your signals are coming so signals have become little weaker so those pulse will now become like this so they are kind of repeated with much more power okay so that it can be directly identified that this is zero this is one over time if this was getting weaker this signal it would have become like this and it might have become below threshold so one would have looked like a zero so repeater reshapes the pulse and repeats the pulse basically and makes it one and similar to repeater we also have hubs so here in repeater you just have one wire okay one ethernet cable and the signals on them were getting repeated okay refreshed and then coming out but what happens if i have a wire and i want that okay it should be coming out of different same thing whatever signal is coming here should be repeated on three different wires okay so the LAN now can be like on this building in this building and in the third building so as you can see here so this is one LAN this is the same LAN part two this is the same LAN part three okay with the hub now what happens is that I can the signal comes here okay so they are forwarded to all these three was and here it also acts as a repeater also acts as a hub so these whatever signals they were becoming weak so they now become repeated and they are refreshed okay and uh, then what happens is these hubs again now so they, this is a kind of star network where multiple wires are coming out but all of them are having the same signal so if whatever is coming it is now repeated on all the three wires coming out and then these hubs again catch this and except from where your signals are coming it will forward it to all other wires going out of the hub 
so designed to hold multiple line cards and they don't amplify the signal they just repeat the signal with proper that curve okay and also operates at this also operates at the physical layer so moving forward so what are the limitations of repeaters and hubs so one large shared link so one of the problem is they have a shared link each bit is sent everywhere so what happens is whatever bit so this is a hub whatever is coming here and it has let's say three outgoing ports so it these bits are going to be sent everywhere so aggregate throughput is limited for example three departments each with 10 mbps independently and then connected via hub must share their 10 mbps okay cannot support multiple LAN technologies okay so they are just repeating the signal okay so they don't buffer the whatever frames are coming okay they don't interpret so can't interconnect between different rates and formats so if some format is there so they cannot change the format because they are doing nothing with the frame now let's talk about bridges okay so what are bridges so bridges are now at so repeaters were at physical layer and they just did not check anything whatever was coming from one port it was repeated at all the other ports okay but they were not smart so now bridges are smart mac layer device or data link layer device which connects two or more lan at the link layer okay so they are now connecting two or more lands so what is humming becoming there this is one particular lan okay this is another lan and both are connected by a bridge so this is one port with which lan one is there and with one port lan two is there so now it processes the packet also it looks at the packet and sees what is the destination and only so let's say this host sends packet which is the destination also resides in this LAN 1. So in this case when the bridge sees this it will not forward this packet to LAN 2 because it knows that okay the destination of this particular frame is in LAN 1 itself okay. So looks up the destination in the table and forwards the frame to appropriate LAN segment. So when it knows that the destination of that particular frame is here, it will not forward it to LAN 1. Only if the destination is here, it will forward. And each segment can then carry its own traffic and there will be probability of less collision because you are not just forwarding packets to different LANs without seeing if that particular packet will belong here okay so this is there so this is quite advantageous okay because now you're not having a lot of collisions so link layer now let's talk about switch okay so what are switches but let's try to look differently okay so we will look at here okay let's try to see so we come to a bridge okay so a bridge what we were seeing it maintains a table for decisions so let's look at those decision making table so we have now a bridge which is connecting two lands okay so it has two ports this is our bridge and it has two ports LAN 1 is connected via port 1 LAN 2 is connected via port 2 to this bridge and let's assume that for now this LAN 1 has two machines on it and LAN 2 has also two machines and these are the 48 bit MAC address so now what it says that it writes it has a table which says that okay if this is the MAC address then you forward it to port 1 so for example land to let's say this machine sends 
a frame to this one okay so that bridge will have a look up here so it's 71 to b 13 45 61 41 so what will it do it will see that okay this is in port 1 so it will forward it to port 1 okay so this way it helps and if it was just to let's say that 61.12 this particular computer then it will find 61.12 okay this is in the same LAN 2 and it will just forward it to port 2 so it will not go out to LAN 1 and it will not cause unnecessary collision okay so this is the beauty a bridge does not change the physical address in the frame so it does not change the address it only makes a lookup for it now let's look at so do we have to fill that particular table which we were looking so it's quite difficult isn't it so now that's why we want the process of making the table to be automated so here is the learning process for the bridge so let's look here so we have a bridge here it has three ports and the three lands are connected to it so LAN 1 is on port 1 LAN 2 is on port 2 and LAN 3 is on port 3 now how does the learning takes place so what happens is let's say that A sends a frame to D okay so a sends a frame to d it comes to this bridge and now initially when the table is not filled so what will happen is that it will look and it will find there is it doesn't know where to send d to okay so it doesn't know which port d belongs to so it will forward it now to port 2 port 3 and it will not forward it to port 1 because it is from there the packet frame is coming but what it knows it knows that the source of this frame is a and it is coming at port 1 so now it writes in the table that okay a is the at port number 1 so next time when let's say f sends a frame to a it can easily know that okay a is at port 1 so this now it doesn't forward it to both 1 and 2 but only to port 1 because it now knows that A resides in port 1. Now let's say second time E sends a frame to A. So E sends a frame to A. E is on LAN 3 which is at port 3 of the bridge. So again based on the source address and if, because it's coming at port 3 it knows that E is on port 3 and it puts it on its table and then now it also knows that A is at port 1 of the bridge so it forwards the frame to port A. Similarly if B sends a frame to C okay so it knows that B is at port 1 okay. This way the learning happens and after some time when mostly all the nodes have sent some message of frame then they will have their table here okay and if somehow one new source is there okay for which the table is not filled so then it will forward it to all the ports so this is how the learning takes place but there is a problem okay what happens is for reliability and fault tolerance many people administrators okay what they do they have two or more bridges for fault tolerance and reliability but that causes a loop okay so let's try to see what is a loop so here what happens is let's say this is LAN 1 there is a bridge 1 bridge 2 two bridges are there and I'm administrator wants to make sure that okay where even if one bridge fails our packet should be frames should be moving around so if this fails then also packets frames can go to C and D land too. But what will be a problem? The problem is of loop. So A sends packet frame to D. Then what happens? It comes to bridge one because it's also it is received by bridge two. 
and both of them now sees that okay the source is a so they put in the table bridge table that a is coming from port 1 so so far well good and two copies of one from bridge 2 one from bridge 1 comes to lang 2 now what happens from bridge 1 the packet frame comes it travels to d and c but because bridge 2 is also on lang 2 it goes that packet from a goes to this one also and now again the source is a okay the frame source is a but now it is for bridge 2 this is coming from port 2 and pack frame from bridge 2 also went to bridge 1 and now even though the source is frame a source is a it is coming from port 2 so now it updates its address as address a ha is coming from port 2 so this becomes a problem and then it passes on the packet to the frame 2 lan 1 then what happens again it sees that okay destination is d so one frame comes here and it says okay the destination is d so it comes here but what happens is that again it updates that okay from a the port now from which it comes is a1 and this keeps on continuing so a loop is created so we need to see this problem and what is the solution the solution is spanning tree when we have multiple bridge for reliability we have spanning tree algorithm we apply here and then what happens is let's say this is the LAN 1, LAN 4, 2 and LAN 3 are connected by 5 bridges okay so this is very good architecture based on for reliability that even if this fails then also let's say between LAN 4 and LAN 3 both of okay so what happened okay both b5 and b2 fail then also if you see even if this fails this fails lan 4 can go via b4 and then b1 to lan 1 so this is very reliable architecture but the problem is we might have a loop okay so this 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 is a loop this one is a loop this whole thing is causing a loop and loop is not very preferred because then endless packets are frames are moving around so what we do is we make these are now nodes okay of a graph so this is lan 1 lan 2 so these we make and then what happens is we make a graph out of it and then what we do is that in this graph we find a minimum spanning tree okay so the minimum spanning tree for this particular graph which was of bridges and lands is this one so now here we remove this edge b3 is now not connected directly to lan 3 it's not connected to lan 4 and b5 is not connected to lan 3 and this was the root of spanning tree okay so now what happens is and still the important thing is all the lands are connected okay so lan 3 is connected to lan 1 also and the hop distance is 1 1 bridge is needed for the connection lan 3 is connected to lan 3 but now it has to go via b2 and b1 lan 2 is also connected to lan 4 via b4 and so on okay so all of the lands are still connected but there are no loops and that is the benefit but now you will say that okay if this will fail bridge b2 then again we will have a problem that lan 3 will now get disconnected from all but then what happens is even though there is a spanning tree it's a not a physical it's a logical spanning tree okay so then they keep on checking if this gets disconnected i will put this port on and this connection will become fine then lan 3 can come connect to 
LAN2 and LAN1 via B3, it can also connect through this link. Okay, so it kind of keeps checking which link has failed. So what is it called? These ports are now called blocking ports, which are by this dash line. Okay, so these are blocking ports. So forward packets are not forwarded for port one of B5, port two of B3, and port two three, port three of B3. Okay, so this is how it happens. So this was about bridge. Now let's look at something more so we have also switches so we have switches and switches also are like bridges typically connect individual computers okay so now what happens is a switch is essentially it's also same as bridge though typically used to connect hosts and not LAN so they connect usually the hosts and they are not for LAN. So now A, B, C and D are connected via switch. And what is the benefit is it can support concurrent con communication. So A can talk to C and at the same time D and B can talk with each other. Okay, so that is the benefit of switch. So we have dedicated access host a direct connection to the switch rather than a shared LAN connection okay it's full duplex and completely supports concurrent transmission so that is important for a switch which might not have been there in a LAN and then it also bridge and switch helps in traffic isolation so what is traffic isolation so let's say we have a switch here we have segment one this one is segment one segment two so they what they do is if a packet is here in this segment and it sends this to this particular segment one frame or packet then only it will be forwarded to this one and not to the other hub so that collisions happen so it's a kind of packet filtering happens here and advantages of hubs over hubs and repeaters only forward frames as they are needed okay extends to geographic span improves privacy also okay so disadvantage what will be the disadvantage when we are processing the packet okay we are parsing the frame and looking up a table it adds to the delay so now i hope you understand the difference between repeater hub bridge and switch and next thing is we need to learn about router which we will do in the next class so thanks a lot